The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you pour out on all who desire it the spirit of grace and supplication. Deliver us as we come into your presence from cold hearts and wandering thoughts, that with steady minds and burning zeal we may worship you in spirit and in truth. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Good morning. morning. Welcome to Annapolis Lutheran Church. As always, it's a pleasure to be with you and to worship alongside of you. If you're watching from home, uh, we're glad that you tuned in and and, uh, we welcome you as well. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, So we are taking a uh, a break from the adult forum, uh, which so far as uh, this season has seen uh, sessions on apologetics and 1 Peter, and we just finished with the Lord's Prayer. Uh, But let not your hearts be troubled. Uh, After Easter, our very own Renaissance lady, uh, Judy White, will be leading a session on the Psalms. So that's going to be after Easter, and we're certainly looking forward to Judy's insight on that. Our Lenten Vesper service uh, continues uh, on Wednesday. Dinner is at 6, and the worship is at 7. We look forward to seeing you there. We've had a wonderful uh, crowd so far, and we're going through uh, Israel's kings, and we're looking at their character and their story to see what they can teach us about faith, life, and Christ. So we look forward to seeing you there. Are there any other announcements? Susie? Good morning. Good morning. In the back of your bulletin is a loose leaf. We're doing Easter dedications. We've gotten started a little late, but we're pulling it together. If you're interested in doing a dedication for the Lutheran Mission Society's Annapolis Compassion Center or dedications for altar flowers, it's all appreciated. Thank you. Uh, Here we like to uh, recognize milestone birthdays, and one of our very own, Henrietta Conlon, is turning 95, Uh, so we we wish her a happy birthday. Um, Absolutely. If you'd like to send her a card, please uh, contact the church office, and then we can give you more details and information about how to do that. Uh, Lastly, let us now prepare our hearts and minds for worship with the prelude.
please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us. In your will, and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us of all of our sins. As a called and ordained minister in the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. And in peace let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Let 
us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we, who for our evil deeds worthily deserve to be punished by the comfort of your grace, however, may mercifully be relieved through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 12, beginning with the first verse. You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord, for though you were angry with me, your anger turned away that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, make known his deeds among the peoples, proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in our midst is the Holy One of Israel. The word of the Lord. We will uh, read responsibly Psalm 32. Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no doubt. While I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore, all the faithful will make their prayers to you in time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding, who must be fitted with grape and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter, beginning with the 16th verse. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him this no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. The word of the Lord. God. 
gospel according to St. Luke, the 15th chapter. tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to hear Jesus, and the Pharisees and the scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. <clears throat> there was a man who had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And so he divided his property between them. Not many days later, the younger son gathered all he had and took a journey into a far country. And there he squandered his property and reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him into that, that to which the pigs ate, the pods, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have more than enough bread, but I perish here with hunger? I will rise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And he said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. And bring the fattened calf and kill it, and let us eat, and let us celebrate. For this, is, for this my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And they began to celebrate. Now his older son was in the field, and he came and drew near to the house, hearing music and dancing. And he called one of his servants, and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, your brother has come and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has received him back safe and sound. But he was angry and refused to go in. His father came out and entreated him. But he answered his father, look, these many years I have served you and I never disobeyed your command. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But this son of yours, this son of yours came, who has devoured your property with prostitutes. You killed the fattened calf for him? And he said to him, son, you were always with me, and all that is mine is yours. It was fitting to celebrate and be glad, for this your younger brother was dead and is alive was lost and is found. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. And let us pray. Gracious God, let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Author Anne Lamott tells a story of a seven-year-old girl who got lost in the large town in which she lived. A police officer saw her and, and stopped by to help. And he put her in the squad car and they, and they slowly drove through the town and the nearby neighborhoods hoping that she would spot a familiar landmark that could lead her back home. But they had no luck. They had no luck. She was lost. She was lost. I think that being lost is something that we can all relate to, which is why Jesus focuses 
on this theme in Luke chapter 15. In this chapter, uh, this chapter features, features Jesus telling three parables, all with the theme of being lost. The parable of the lost sheep, the lost coin, and the parable for today, the parable of the lost son. Now, while it makes sense in this chapter to name it the parable of the lost son, I think a better name, I think a much better name, is the parable of the lost sons. Lost sons. For as we will see, both sons are lost, just in different ways. So let's start with the younger son. The younger son, or the younger brother, has often been called the prodigal son. The prodigal son. Which means reckless. He's the reckless son. And this certainly fits. He asked for his inheritance, which means that his father is all but dead to him. I want my inheritance now. Not wait until you pass away. He is reckless in thinking that he does not need his father's protection, his wisdom, or his love. He is reckless in how he wastes his money on wild living. And his recklessness, as we're told, earns him nothing but humiliation and shame as he finds himself eating with pigs. Now, to the Pharisees and, and the other Jews whom, whom Jesus is telling this parable to, the younger son has hit absolute rock bottom. Absolute rock bottom. Not only is he eating with ritually unclean animals, but he is also most likely in a Gentile land. To the Jews, this, this reckless young man is outside the boundaries, you see, of God's dominion, of God's promises. He is as low as you can go. He is lost. He's lost. However, we are told that the young man comes to himself. He comes to himself. In our, uh, in our Lutheran tradition, we teach that repentance begins with contrition. Which is basically the feeling of terror that strikes our conscience when we realize what we've done. When we realize the sin. So when the younger brother comes to himself, he takes the first step towards repentance. He feels the terror and he feels the guilt of what he has done by essentially the guilt of essentially living and acting as if his dad was dead. That's the main sin. And then squandering what he had. The next step of repentance is confession. Confession. After coming to himself, he immediately confesses and says, says to himself as he's practicing what he's going to say to his, to his father, I have sinned against heaven and of earth. That's the confession. I have sinned. Now, in our, in our Lutheran tradition, the last step of repentance is absolution and reconciliation. So he goes back to his father and he receives forgiveness. And he's welcomed back to his father's house with a grand party. Which angers the older brother and probably the Pharisees who are listening to this story. And we'll get back to that in a minute. In the epic film, Lawrence of Arabia, there's a scene where Lawrence is leading a daring expedition across the desert to orchestrate, essentially, a surprise attack on the Ottoman Empire. Now, as they ride along through this treacherous terrain, they notice that one of their fellow comrades had fallen off their horse. There's no telling how long it's been since he fell off. He could be anywhere along where they started and to where they're going. Now, Lawrence, he wants to go back and look for this man to find him. But the others protest, saying he is too far gone. He's too far gone. He's too lost. There's no way we can find him. No way we can find him. This, this can never, this can never be our attitude as Christians. 
Never. We must never feel or think we are too far gone. We must never think or feel as if we are lost beyond being found. Psalm 139. Where shall I go from your spirit? Or where, where shall I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, if I make my bed in hell, you are there. If I make my bed even in hell, you are there. We can't get too far to be found. Jesus, he tells this parable in part to remind us that it is never too late to repent and to be found by God. Repentance, no matter how far you've fallen, is always an option. Is always an option. An option for you, an option for your friends, for your neighbors, for your families. Always an option. Think of the dying thief on the cross next to Jesus. Think of him. Now the scene with the father and the oldest son is not an epilogue. As sometimes we read it. It's not a hereafter. It's not an afterthought. It is just as important as the first half of the story. You know, if we, if we view this parable as just the lost son, we lose sight of the fact that the older brother is lost as well. In a different way, but still very much lost. The older brother, thinking he has been treated unfairly, refuses to join the celebration for the return of his brother. When he speaks to his father about it, he even refuses to name his brother. Did you notice that in the reading? What does he say? <clears throat> he says, that son of yours. That son of yours. Now, the, the irony here is despite his refrain from reckless living, he is now guilty of the same thing the younger brother was. Disowning his family. Cutting away from his family. Cutting those ties. That son of yours. Not my brother. Now, to be fair, it's not quite as extreme, but the way he says that son of yours, it almost seems if he, if he's, if it's, as if he is distancing himself from the father as well. Now, this is quite revealing about the true motives of the older brother. <clears throat> In his book, Prodigal God, Tim Keller explores the motives of the older brother. And those like him that he calls elder brothers. He really does a deep dive analysis of this character. Here's what he says. Here's what Keller says. Elder brothers believe if they live a good life, they should get a good life. <coughs> that God owes them a smooth road if they try very hard to live up to the standards. If it doesn't pay off, there is rage. There is rage, anger. Now, every time that I have studied this book in the church with different groups, there's always at least one person who vehemently disagrees with Tim Keller. The older brother deserves to be angry, they say. He has always done what is right, and now his father is sliding him in favor of the bad son. I get that. I really do. It does seem to be that way. And the Pharisees would have certainly seen it that way. Because they, they would have identified with the older brother. <clears throat> you know, I went to church every Sunday growing up. I missed two Sundays, I think. One was I had to watch Andy Roddick in the final of the U.S. Open. <laughs> but I, I tried really, really hard to be good. And I would get frustrated. I would. I, I really would get frustrated when kids around me at school did all the wrong things and still got better grades. Right? <laughs> Looked like they had more friends. They won more matches in tennis. They, had better, they were better athletes. I was bitter. I was bitter. Like the older brother. I get it. It's hard. I do. I get it. But I was a classic older brother. Because I was missing the point. 
I was missing the point as the brother does in, this, in the parable. The older brother never had to stay with the father. He never had to stay with the father. He got to stay with the father. Do you see the difference, friends? He got to stay with the father. The father tells him that all that is mine is yours. He got to stay with his father. Remain in the safety of his father's estate. Remain a beneficiary of his wisdom and his love. He got to be in that relationship with his father. Ultimately, Keller concludes, elder brothers live good lives out of fear, not out of love. Not out of love. The older brother is just as lost as the younger brother. Because he lives and works on his father's estate without truly loving him or receiving his love in return. He is duty-bound, hoping for a reward. But he does not realize that the reward is and always was being in the presence of his loving father. That is the reward. We are not Christians to become better athletes. We are not Christians to have more friends. We are not Christians to have more money. We are Christians because we get to be in fellowship with God and each other. That's why we're Christians. That's why we believe in God. You know, as I was thinking about this parable and, and writing this sermon, you know, I thought there was still a better name. Lost son doesn't quite do it. Lost sons doesn't quite do it. There's a better name. And it is the parable of the loving father. He's the main character. The father plays a prominent role in both the story of the younger son and the older son. It's the father who runs out to meet the younger brother before, the, before he can get to him. It's the father who sacrifices his deity by lifting up his gown to run down the street to meet his son who he loves so desperately that he doesn't care about what he looks like. It's the father who leaves the party, leaves the celebration to go out, to go to the oldest son. He initiates. He goes out to him. It's the father who loves his reckless son. It's the father who loves his bitter son. Jesus tells this parable. In part to let the Pharisees know that he loves them. As the father loves the older brother. Jesus tells this parable to let the Gentiles know. The sinners who are gathered. The younger brothers. That they are not beyond his love. That they are not out of his reach. We read this parable so that we remember that God finds us when we are lost. We read this parable to remember that God loves us when we are reckless. We read this parable to remember that God loves us when we are bitter. We read this parable to know that we too are loved by God the Father. We too are loved by God the Father. We probably don't forget where we live, like the seven-year-old and the story by Anne Lamott. But we certainly do find ourselves lost. This is a big world. It's full of lies, it's full of deceptions, and it's full of evil. And we can find ourselves alienated from the presence of God very easily and very quickly. My pastoral care professor had an acronym. WIGIOT is the acronym. WIGIOT. And it stands for, where is God in all this? Where is God in all this? Indeed, where is God in all of this? Where is God in all of this war and the threat of a bigger war? Where is God in all of this dissension? Where is God in all of this fear? Where is God? I'm sensing I'm lost. Where is he? Now this, this little girl riding along with the police officer was starting to get worried that she wouldn't be able to find her home. 
But suddenly, suddenly she pointed to a church. You can let me out now, she said. Are you sure? The police officer said. Yes, yes, she said. This is my church, and I can always find my way home from here. I can always find my way home from here. Now, she knew how to get to her house from the church because it's a, a route that she's taken many times. We get that. But she was more right than she could possibly know. She was more right than she could possibly know. No matter how lost we are, no matter how reckless we are, no matter how bitter, no matter how scared, how doubtful, no matter in the midst of war, in the midst of pandemic, we can always find our way home from here. From here. We can always find our way home. It is from here that we find the absolution and the reconciliation with God and neighbor. It is here we find that the father who ran out to his younger son, the father who ran out to his older son, now runs down to us. Runs down to us. And finds us. And brings us home to him. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again.
Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. God of all mercy, by your power to heal and forgive, graciously cleanse us from all sin and make us strong. Lord, in your mercy. Heavenly Father, your Son never turned away any who sought his healing. Blessed with his healing touch, Robin Baker, Connie Krupe, Bill Donaldson, Pastor Ron Hamm, Tom Jett, Margaret Krawoski, Oliver Wade Hall, Beth Lucas, Jerry Martin, Sharon Poet, Isabel Taylor, Adam Taylor, Frank Williamson, Michael Zelenak, and those we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Dear Lord, comfort with your presence all who are homebound or alone, especially Carolyn Buttemeyer, Jean Clark, Henrietta Conlon, Eleanor Heckendorn, Betty Stroll, and David Zayer. Remind them you are with them always. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Gracious Father, safeguard all who serve in our military at home and abroad. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Lord, bless our sister NALC Atlantic Mission Region Partner, St. Jacob's Lutheran Church in Glen Rock, Pennsylvania. Bless them as you have blessed us. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Dear Lord, we continue to watch in horror as our brothers and sisters in Ukraine are attacked repeatedly and suffer destruction and death. Sustain them, guide them, protect them, and grant them strength to withstand this ruthless aggression. We especially ask that the refugees find safe havens. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O oh Lord. We command all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the peace of Christ. I'm going to pray with him, and then I'll, he'll come to you. Yeah.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Gracious God, Heavenly Father, we are truly grateful for this fellowship that you give us. We're truly humbled by it. Thank you, Lord, for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into this world to find us, no matter where we are. Heavenly Father, we ask now your blessing upon our choir, that they may proclaim this good news through song and praise. In your name we pray. Amen.
pray. Merciful Father, we offer with joy and thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love. Receive them for the sake of him who offered himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. You bid your people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast. Renew our zeal in faith and life and bring us to the fullness of grace that belongs to the children of God. And so with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> mercy for our fallen world, you gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give thanks to you for the salvation that you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts, that we may receive our Lord with a living faith, as he comes to us in his holy supper. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. We do not presume to come to this your table, O oh, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but give us the same Lord, whose poverty is always mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, to abide in the body and blood of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, that our sins In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Gracious God, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, taste and see that our Lord is good. Amen. Amen.
of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. <laughs> Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.